Whoa, Jessica, what are you looking at in here? <laughs> what? What are you talking about? What? <laughs> what in the heck? Wow, amazing. I can't believe you would do me like this. I thought I was the only man for you. Wow, but VR has opened up a whole new selection. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Ozzy supports you. <laughs> Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got a fun video for you that's all about the brand new HTC Vive Flow. Yes, these are full 2K VR headsets that sit on my head and pop right off just like this. They are the most lightweight, impressive piece of hardware that I have ever seen in VR technology, and they make me feel like I'm in Ready Player One because these are glasses that just come on and off and the video quality is fantastic. Unfortunately, there are some weird downsides to the hardware and the software that we have to talk about. And in this interview, we're also going to talk about gaming, media playback, and porn because HTC Vive didn't sponsor this episode. I bought this with my own money so I can talk about porn all I want. So we're going to have fun with that one. And besides, porn is a major driver of VR technology. I'm missing out. Got to go back to the good shots here. First up today, let's talk about hardware specs because they are incredibly imp impressive, especially for such a small package. Speaking of packaging, the packaging that they come in is very simple, just recycled cardboard pops right out, not a lot of fatting, padding or foam. The headsets themselves are super light. They weigh 189 grams, which for those of you that use Freedom Units is about 0.41 pounds, which is just like nothing. It's just like wearing heavy glasses. My phone weighs more. Every VR headset ever weighs more. A pocket calculator weighs more. They're as light as they can possibly be. All that being said, though, they are still essentially just, you know, glasses. So they click on the back of your head and most of the weight is going to be supported by your nose bridge. And uh, it may be very light, but it's still a lot of weight just to put on the nose. So it still can get a little bit heavy from time to time. Overall, still quite good. When it comes to video quality, I think the specs are impressive given how small it is. It's 1600p per eye, which adds up to a total resolution of 3.2K, just barely under 4K, does 2K great. And overall, that's a really high resolution. That's comparable to the index, that's comparable to like Vive Pros and stuff. It's not the highest resolution thing on the market, but it is very competitive with other VR headsets. Field of view is at 100 by default, which is quite nice, and it has 75 hertz. Now, 75 hertz is a little bit slower than what you want. Modern VR headsets, I prefer to have it 90, 120, or like the index can go up to 144 hertz because frame rate is very important. However, the vast majority of what you're going to be doing with this headset is watching media at 60 FPS, so 75 is all that you need. I just wish that it were a little bit more. One of my favorite features about the Vive Flow that very few headsets have right is individual eye diopter adjustments. If you have any visual impairments or, you know, something's a little bit out of focus, there's even like a tutorial mode where you just adjust the diopters on the inside to get it just right, nice, crisp, and clear. There are fancy p headsets that plug into your PC that just don't do that. And I also like that there's no tracking stations needed. It's a little bit difficult to see through the front of the lens, uh, but it tracks with a bunch of external cameras and a gyroscope and all this kind of stuff. So you don't have to put base stations everywhere like a traditional Vive. All of that probably sounds very impressive. Uh, a 3K VR headset that plays 60 FPS media and is completely wireless and weighs less than my phone? Sign me up, what's the downside? There are some massive downsides to this one. There's massive upsides and massive downsides. So right off the rip, this device requires external power. You have to plug it into a cell phone charger or battery bank of some kind. You can plug it into a PC or directly into the wall if you have the right converter. But HTC recommends a certain voltage and wattage on your power bank so that it just works optimally. And I've seen some people complaining that they plug it into older power banks and they get low power warnings and stuff like that, or the frame rate won't go above 30 and just goofy little glitches. So I ponied up the extra money and bought the HTC power bank for $80 just for the purpose of this review. And one of the things I was super frustrated about is that it did not come with the right cable to hook up to the HTC Vive. The Vive Flow came with a USB-C to C cable and my charger came with a USB regular to micro cable, if I'm not mistaken. 
and at no point could I actually connect the Vive Flow to the charger, so I had to go get another cable, so minus points there. And the carrying case also cost $50. It's a piece of plastic. It is really simple, really cheap. It did not cost $50 to manufacture. It looks like something I got on Wish.com for about $5. So that was pure profit for them. It does fit well, it does work well, it looks cool, it's just a little bit overpriced. The big downside here is the external power bank. So while it's a wireless headset, you'll have it on your head and with the little power cable going down behind your ear and probably plugging into your pocket. So it feels a little bit more wired than what you probably want. Those are just the minor downsides. There are bigger ones coming. You cannot plug this into PC for PC to USB support, at least not officially. I initially thought that I could plug it in through the uh, USB cable and then plug it into my computer and just use it like a regular Vive or a regular headset or unlock it or something and just play PC games because it's got the uh, quality for sure but it does not work that way. There is no official PC compatibility support, no virtual desktop, none of that stuff. There is the option to unlock uh, USB controls for developers, and you can run some unofficial stuff that you have to download from like little communities and stuff that will do some limited PC support and desktop emulation, but I don't really get into that. There's no native support for it. Another massive downside is that it's mobile only. It is entirely 100% controlled only from mobile phones, not from PCs, not from its own uh, buttons or really anything. It's all about your mobile phone and it has to be Android because this is HTC. There is no iPhone compatibility out there. So if you're out there and you're a gamer and you have an iPhone and a PC, you literally can't use the Vive Flow. You have to have an Android device and that is a massive L. I know that's about half to maybe 60% of people, but you're still throwing away another, I don't know, 40% of your audience right out the door with no iPhone or PC support, which seems very arbitrary for me for such an expensive product. I mean, these downsides at a $500 price point is not what I was hoping for. On top of that, you can also only control it with your phone. It has no support for wands or sticks or other Vive accessories. And it's supposed to have a hand tracking update that comes out later so that you can do like hand gestures and stuff through the AR cameras, but that's not there yet. As of now, you just hook up your phone, you use your phone kind of like a laser pointer, and that's all you've got. And I have to admit, it doesn't work very well. The phone control is poor at best. It lets me navigate the menus. It lets me click around. In a video game, I'll never be able to accurately shoot or do things. It never scales the phone to where it's at. The phone doesn't even really like move if I reach my hand out. It's just kind of on a rotating axis and it just rotates and points at things. So the phone controller was a very poor choice to be the only thing. I think it's a great choice if you want a simple pop it in, play a video. If you're traveling, if you know you don't want a big setup, that's fine. But you can't do a big setup. You can only use your phone. So, oh my God. God, that's frustrating. Moving along, let's talk about software and purpose behind the design of this device. HTC seems to have designed it to primarily be a portable media player. It's just a small VR media player. It's an experience machine. For those of you that like watching 360 VR videos, that like, you know, flying through fractals or space or adult films, which I didn't forget about, we're gonna talk about later. That's really what it's for. It's about playing media. And even when you look at the advertisements and stuff, it's all about relax, do a conference, experience the music, do yoga with these virtual instructors and blah, blah, blah. And even when you boot up Viveport and you take a look around in Viveport at all the videos that are available, the vast majority of them are just 360 VR videos that appear to be have that appear to have been licensed probably from YouTube to the best of my ability to tell. And we're gonna loop back around on that Viveport thing later. But now it's time to talk about something a little bit more mature, we'll say. So my original purpose behind purchasing this headset was so that I could eat a bunch of Delta 8, get high as a kite, put it on my head and just watch space videos. I just wanted to go watch trippy, you know, fractal videos. I wanted to watch VR music videos or stuff on the GoPro channel because I, there's just something about virtual reality and cannabis that just go together like this. So I just love mixing D8 and VR. I've been doing that for a while. A lot of the Beat Saber streams y'all saw me do, I was high as a kite for those and having just super fun time. But I think the more important thing to talk about is porn. The device is fantastic for porn, and that's good for this device because porn kind of dictates media in general. If you think about it, when it came down to Betamax or VHS, porn chose VHS, Betamax died. When it came down to, I think it was Laserdisc and DVD, it was DVD. When it was Blu-ray and HD DVD, 
Blu-ray, and then eventually digital distribution, then eventually streaming. At the end of the day, porn moves the market, and this is a fantastic device for pornography. So right off the rip, YouTube VR is supported through the Firefox Reality app. They have a sort of, it's just a Firefox browser. It's the closest you have to a virtual desktop on this thing. But they made sure that YouTube 360 VR works. It takes a little minute. You have to watch the ad and then you click the player and that works fantastically. I admit that the compression while streaming isn't great and sometimes the connection might lag or YouTube will do a weird thing. But by and large, it's fantastic to have access to the entire YouTube library. You move over to Dailymotion or Vimeo or something, your support's way spottier. It seems to have native Pornhub VR support to the best of my ability to test. If there is a 360 VR Pornhub video in the right format, you can just go to the site, click it, load it up, hit the full screen button, and it just seems to work. But I will say the support is limited. Pornhub gets very glitchy when it's playing an ad. I'm a peasant, I don't have Pornhub Premium, sorry guys. And a lot of the videos seem to chop a little bit. Whatever about their player seems to cause a little bit of a delay when you move your head. I think it's a low frame rate problem. I think a lot of them are filmed in 30 FPS, which isn't very fun. If you go to other porn sites, popular ones, big like streaming things, I actually didn't find anything that worked. It tended to crash when they were playing ads and then if the video loaded, it didn't format properly. So as far as native porn support goes, probably Pornhub VR, but there's a workaround for that one. The Vive Flow is somewhat robust and versatile when it comes to media. So they did allow one USB option, which is USB file transfer to local storage. The device itself has 64 gigabytes of storage. So I don't know, 20, 30 videos, I guess, depending on what quality and size and length you're downloading. So if you wanted to watch adult films or even stuff from YouTube or stuff that you've recorded, you can download that, plug it in via USB, transfer directly to the local device, and then play it in the Vive Media Player. When you do it this way, there's no compression, there's no frame rate issues, there's no bandwidth issues, and it just seems to work better. So if you download your own porn and put it on the device, that's great. Same thing with YouTube. If you download your own trippy space videos or 360 VR snowboarding or whatever the heck you're doing, and you just get the highest quality possible and play the raw file, that's always gonna be better than streaming online. And it's very easy to do that with the Vive Flow. On this topic, the Vive port videos are an interesting start. Uh, a number of them are slightly mature. There's a lot of VR bikini yoga going on. So uh, you, can, you can kind of see what they're trying to subtly suggest you might use this machine for in the future. I don't think too many women are buying this to do yoga in. But by and large, Viveport wants you to sign up so that you get a whole bunch of these VR experience videos very few of them look like they would be worth actually paying for when it has native support for VR. So I'm not big on that one. And Viveport in general is definitely not worth it for the Vive Flow. Maybe for Vive Pro on PC, that's a different thing. But the Vive port is going to be something that's very heavily advertised with the device. It'll be a two month trial. It'll be all over. Sign up here, get your two months free, free games, whatever. But I think it's $12, $13 per month. And in the case of the Vive Flow, it has very limited game support. I think it was 48 total games, but they were the simplest, cheapest most rudimentary games on the entire market and a couple of them that were just terrible like so bad that they had a couple of zero star reviews that didn't seem to function there were games out there with developers that didn't know how to edit the audio in their own trailers and there was really very little that looked like it would be fun to play there were a couple of like kind of experience games where they're cg rendered and you, you know walk through and click through and do things that are Okay, but if you're thinking about shooting people or playing Beat Saber or anything that takes even a modicum of effort or skill, completely useless. So for me, for my money, I don't know why I would pay $12 a month for the Vive port to get games that aren't fun to play and I don't know, 30, 40, 50, maybe even 100 360 VR media videos when there's like 100,000 of them that I can instantly access on YouTube or download my own adult films and just put them on there. I don't have to pay for more bikini yoga. Depending on who you are, you might find it either a good or bad thing that the Facebook metaverse is not supported on the HTC Vive Flow. Right now, the Facebook metaverse is limited to Oculus only, Facebook accounts only, and I think it just runs through Horizon Worlds. It's very 
very simple and very sort of first party. It's more difficult to join on other devices, and to the best of my knowledge, there's no way to join that particular metaverse on the Vive Flow, but I don't think the metaverse is the most popular of ideas, so right now I don't think it's a big deal for people. They do also offer a couple of social experiences. There is a Vive Hangout conference room business kind of thing where you can load in little avatars and do a business meeting with friends. I don't know, or, or coworkers. I don't know how that's exactly better than just doing a Zoom call and seeing people for real and doing presentations that way, but the option is there. There's also like a beach relaxed place and a lo-fi hangout lounge. The lo-fi lounge is really trippy to me because it's just like the lo-fi girl with her headset and the computer, but you can move around in the space. The only problem is that it pretty much just plays their music. You don't have the opportunity to load your music into it. So whatever their lo-fi mix is, is what you're stuck with. So I don't use that one very much. So even though I paid a lot for the battery, I do have to admit, it works fantastically. I have probably used this device for 18 to 20 hours by now, and I, a battery's still going just fine. So I'm very impressed with that. I don't. I think I might have only lost one out of the four bars on it. So while you pay a lot for the battery, the performance is great, and it'll work for cell phones too. The HTC Vive Flow has a couple of other unique features that are worth talking about. Number one is that it's not entirely a solo experience. You do have the option to cast to TV and it will share whatever it is that you're seeing in the VR world. So if you wanted to watch videos and your friends can watch too or play a game and share, you can do that very easily. Same way you have the little cast option to cast YouTube to TV, cast an app, Chromecast, just the direct you know, wireless transfer. It works fine and it also doesn't seem to impact the performance of the device very much. Because you can cast to TV, you can also cast to PC. You can cast directly to your computer for streaming, and uh, I've done this on every computer in my house except for this one, my main PC. It doesn't work for some reason. My stream PC works, my laptops works, my wife's works, my old laptop works. A little bit funny like that, but the idea is that you can treat your PC like one of those TVs. You can direct stream the video to it, and then you can just capture the screen with OBS and stream whatever you want. It's very straightforward. Well, it's mostly straightforward if you don't have technical problems like I did. They do have an option to actually see out of the external cameras. Like if you just wanna see what's in front of you and the world around you, you can hit a button and it'll just take you right back to alternate reality mode. Now these work on infrared cameras. So what you get is uh, mostly black and white image, little bit lower resolution than what you want. And field of view is not gonna be real life. You're gonna feel like you're kind of zoomed in through some binoculars, but it does work in case you need to do some things and then hop back into the game. Since we do external tracking, I wanted to try it in a variety of different places. It works fine in big rooms. It works fine in small rooms. It works fine uh, in decent lighting in the dark is not, not as great. Or if there's a lot of weird obstructions that kind of mess up the tracking, not as much. But I, I had to try really hard to screw it up. It basically just worked almost anywhere. It also worked on bad Wi-Fi. It connects to your phone through both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So I wanted to test it with a very poor Wi-Fi connection and it worked just fine with no problems. And supposedly the device worked on, works on planes. It has an airplane mode, a passenger mode that you can turn on. And I have not had the opportunity to use this in a car or a plane or anywhere outside of my house because as of recording this video, I'm snowed in in the Texas freeze and I can't really go anywhere. <laughs> but I will just assume that their marketing material is true and that it'll work just fine on a plane. And if you're a frequent flyer, my God, this could be something just huge for you. You could just load in a bunch of videos. You just load in movies and just watch them in VR kind of in your own little world if you wanted to. After all of that, it's time for the final verdict. Is this a good or bad VR headset? Should you buy it? I think that this is the best possible VR media player on the market. Now, don't get me technically wrong here. There's a ton of like wired to PC products that will get you a little bit higher quality, but this gets maybe the second best quality, but at a weight less than your cell phone and completely mobile and portable and very simple and without a lot of trackers and stuff going on. So I think it's a fantastic VR media player. However, I think that since that's kind of all that it does right, I think that the price to value ratio is poor. 
So it costs $500 for the device. And if you buy all of the accessories like I did, I think mine added up to like 670 something plus shipping, which is a lot of money for something that is primarily gonna be used for either pornography or YouTube VR. Perhaps if you're a richer gamer or a richer enthusiast and you just don't care about price, then it's totally fine. But it's like buying a PlayStation 5 just to watch videos on. So not a lot of people are gonna value that. I also feel that the device cuts a lot of corners. It is on the cusp of greatness. Just the, the sheer smallness of the hardware and the future of putting on the goggles and taking them on and off to quickly jump into a VR world, which you can do with this device, is insane. But then you have an external battery pack and you have a phone controller and it doesn't work on your PC and you have to have these two different wireless connections and you have to have the Vive port app going on and then you have to do this. And there's a lot of corners cut and hoops to jump through. I feel like with a little bit more time and a little bit more money, even if it were like $1,000, having this just be able to plug directly into the PC and do PC stuff would have been the way to go or have wand support or something like that. As it is, it's very limited and that's frustrating to me. Also really blows if you don't have an Android phone and a decent one at that. So for me personally, I absolutely love this device. I'm super happy with my purchase. This thing here is just, <laughs> I can, when, when I get high on Delta 8, I can just pop up, I can just anywhere in the house, I can just pop this thing out, put it on, and I can be watching some kind of crazy entertaining video in a matter of seconds. I can quickly share things with friends, I can view VR content, and if uh, the mood strikes me, yes, I can watch adult films on it. And so can my wife, my God, she's found some weird stuff. So while I absolutely love mine, it is exactly what I wanted. I'm an Android user who only wanted a really nice VR media player. And I got an Android compatible device that is a very nice VR media player. If you are not that customer, and you wanted gaming, or you wanted something more sophisticated, or you wanted something iPhone compatible, this device will be nothing but a nightmare for you. So I love mine, but I would not recommend it for most people. I would recommend it for a specific subset of people that don't mind paying a premium to get a really nice media player. And that's kind of what it is. But it was still very fun. I also had a lot of fun filming this review. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out. <clears throat> oh, uh, hi there. You just uh, caught me doing some research for today's review on the uh, HTC Vive Flow. This is the smallest, lightest weight VR headset that I have ever seen, and I was just uh, testing to make sure that it's got great resolution.